morning, everyone, and and uh, good evening to some of our guests around the world. You know, I uh, it, because Amon Gerbach is such a global company. When I looked at the the people who logged on for the the webinar, I mean, we have people from you know the Middle East, uh, Europe, and even some in Asia. So wow, some guys are staying up late to <laughs> to listen here, and uh, it's also a holiday in the U.S. So uh it was nice. it, it was surprising the composition of people who logged on today being uh, a lot more from uh, uh different countries in the world than we usually get so uh good morning good afternoon good evening everyone you know it's a pleasure to have uh, with us today the chief marketing officer chief strategist chief of a lot of things at Ahmad Gerbach and uh, uh, direct from uh, Austria Mr. Christian Ermer. So, Christian, how are you doing? Hi. Good, very good. Thank you. And thanks. I'm very excited to, to be part of this series. Um, I'm very honored to be invited to, to speak to you for, for an hour now. No, that's perfect. I mean, uh, Christian and I have, have known each other for a few years now. And definitely, he has a, a, a very good strategic sense of where the industry is going. And especially since, you know, AG covers uh, the industry all around the world. They see what's going on in different countries relative to what we're seeing in North America. And uh, I, I think a good place to start, Christian, is uh, tell us a bit of how you ended up in the, in the dental business. There was never a plan. <laughs> there yeah. was never a plan. <laughs> but you say you, you spend one year in dental, you stay forever. Um, so I'm in 10 years now. And I guess that's <laughs> the deal is done. <laughs> um, so I'm, as I said, I'm in dental since 10 years now. Um, I started as um, head of product management for instruments at Cable. Um, so on the dentist side, and I joined the lab side seven years ago when I, when I started um, with, with Amman Gerbach, um, first as head of product management um, for our global product portfolio. And um, now I'm responsible for um, the marketing and the strategic development of our of our product offering um, globally. So. And and uh, how's how's the ride been for ten years in dental? <laughs> it's been it has been interesting. It's it's a I mean it's a it's a super exciting um, industry. Um, it's a lot of things happening. Um, the market dynamics are great. Um, it's the digitization as as and we've been very strong part of the of the digital development of the of the of the lab industry um it's just fun it's it's really exciting to to see a industry changing and being part of of driving that change uh, i remember a time when uh, uh when i mentioned i'm on gerbach people would think articulator <laughs> yeah, you know, and now I don't even think uh, people remember you made the articulator. You know? <laughs> uh, that's sad. <laughs> <They're so great. laughs> we still have articulators, um, and they are actually are still um, a strong part of our of our digital chain, because everything starts with the model. Yes. Um, and whatever you do, um, it's garbage in, garbage out. Um, if you have a great model that you digitize um, and, and you will have a, a good restoration. Um, but you're right, um, our focus changed a lot over the last 10 years. Um, we we yeah. started with the first um, digital CACM system 2009. It's the motion one. Wow. It was the, one of the first that every lab could afford. Um, it, was, it was moving, it started what we called the in-house movement, um, uh -huh. going away from like industrial big machines, the routers for 500K. Um, to desktop mills in a system that everybody can afford. How, how does that happen? I mean, you know, the AG team's working on articulators and then one guy goes, let's build the mill. Like, <laughs> how, how does that transition happen? And it was, a, um, it was before my time, I've, I've, uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, but um, there was um, a, a step in between. It was copy milling. If you remember, it was um, the first yeah. way to like um, really mill um, uh, zirconia yeah. by hand. Zirconia. So zirconia was just starting as a as a as a as a material, and we started with copy milling, and then we saw that um, that everything is moving into digital, or or like it, the industry is moving into digital, and we said it's not right that everything 
is moving into the, 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 the big milling centers, um, it should be the lab that's doing the work. So we, we move the copy milling into a, a CAD-CAM system. Because uh, AG is one of the, the few companies that's still very lab focused today. Isn't that the case? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. our heritage and, and it's, it's yeah. our, we are, we are about the restorative workflow. And, and our, one of our core beliefs is that the restorative workflow has to be carried out or is headed by the dental lab. And that's right. all our offering is, is, um, is towards this um, restorative workflow and, and supporting the labs in, in digitizing um, the restorative workflow. And uh, no, I'm sure the audience is, is curious. You guys do business all around the world. Tell us a bit of what you saw during COVID and, you know, the shutdowns, observations yeah. going from, yeah. you know, Middle East to Asia, to Europe, to the Americas. Yeah, I can tell you a bit out of like how it, how it was for us um, as, a, as a company. Usually we are, um, if we have like local crisis as a global company, we can mitigate it um, pretty good. So if there is something going on in Brazil, let's say the, um, uh, on, on, on the exchange rate or other stuff. And, and um, so if there are local crises, we're, we're pretty good in, in mitigating that globally. But COVID-19 was different for us. Um, it, it hit us on, on a global base and, and it was pretty much an instant shutdown of, of our business um, starting in April. Um, and you can you can see that, and it's like it was um, a very nice start with the with the Chicago Midwinter Show, and after that everything was like um, in, in, in a shutdown. And um, you you could you could see different the, the, the how the countries differently handled uh, the, the situation. And um, if you go from east to west, um, China was the first to get there, and we see uh -huh. that. But China was the first also to come back. Um, still has this local shutdowns as you see them in, in Beijing, for example. Um, but you also see that the business is not back at 100% yet um, in China. Um, if you take India, they're still completely in lockdown. Um, if you're moving to Europe, Germany is pretty good. It's, it's, going, um, it's, it's gradually going back and business is coming back. And if you're going to the West side, um, the US, we still see from, from our perspective um, a partial like lockdown and slowdown of the business and Latin America for us still hasn't hit the peak of the first wave. It's still, still very much in, in, in trying to, to handle the crisis. So it's on a global scale, it's very heterogeneous um, how, the, how the countries are, are coping with the, with the crisis and um, how it's affecting the, the, the population and the economy. So it makes it really tough for someone like you to start budgeting at this point, yeah. you know, because you don't know, yeah. you know, revenues, like, yeah, how, how does one deal with that? Exactly. That's, um, so we, what we do is um, we are in a, in, a, in a constant exchange with our people in the countries and with our customers. <laughs> Um, so that's the first thing is we, we don't think in budget right now. We, we think in, in how, can we, how can we support our customers, how can we support our people, our employees around the world um, to, to make the best out of this crisis and get out of this crisis. So budget is not a, and revenue planning is right now, it's not a, <laughs> it's not a prim primary target for us. Um, and, and for sure, it, it will be, it will be um, uh, hard for us to do that. I mean, we will see... So what we know is that we won't do, we won't get to, to the plans we had this year, and we will <laughs> definitely see um, an impact on our business for next year as well. We don't see it, it, it recovering like a, what sometimes we think as a V shape. Um, mm -hmm. The business is coming up pretty quickly. So the country, the countries that are recovering, they usually recover very slow and um, are not at the at the hundred percent as you would you would see. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the labs ordering zirconia from from you guys, um, what are you seeing when they when they go back into business and let's say the lockdowns are opened back up? What do you see? Like, what volumes are they doing relative to where they were before? That's interesting. It depends. It's it's country by country, um, different. And it's even, it's even smaller. It's lab by lab. 
Um, and I can tell you it's um, COVID-19 acts like a lens on okay. everything. It's like you see things clearer and um, it amplifies tendencies and, and things that's happening in the, in the market. And I, what I can tell you is that the labs that have a strong position or had already a strong position um, and did the right things during the crisis, they're coming back even stronger than before. Um, so wow. then we have labs that, that are at 80, 100% or even 110% um, after the crisis because they, they had already a good setup. Um, most of them yeah. are digital. Um, um, most of them are um, differentiated. They have um, a clear picture of what they are, a clear identity. Um, and, and, those, and they did the right things during the crisis. So they educated, for example, we have labs that educated, they used the time to educate the dentists, to build up relationship with the customers, um, to, to think about their services. And all these labs are, they are um, they doing at least as good as before the crisis. And we have Interesting. others as well, yeah. So I'm going to do a quick poll, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and I just want to know uh, who in the audience has an AG mill or printer or scanner, you know, just to give us an idea of uh, the type of people watching today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can vote too. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so we you know where the one is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, and and what do you think the been the biggest challenge for you guys through all of this? The biggest challenge, I mean, we are we're really in a lucky position um, compared to um, to. Oh, by the way, here you go. Fifty three percent use a AG bill or printer or scanner, Very good. and then sixteen percent not yet, and thirty two percent from another supplier. That's a pretty good ratio, man. Very good. And still potential huh? to work on. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a better job than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the ch the, um, what I was referring to is like the challenges we, we have. Um, I, I have to say we're in a lucky position that we, that we have um, an offering that's not only on capital equipment, not only selling mills and scanners. Um, so maybe I, I take a step back. What, what HE is offering is an end-to-end -end solution. That means that you can buy everything from us, like the scanner, the software, the CAM software, the mill, the tools, the materials, um, the furnaces, um, the services. This, all this comes from us in one package. So it, it means that um, compared to other competitors who don't have that, um, don't only sell mills, we have a solid base of revenue that helps us still through this crisis, through the materials, through services and so on, to, um, to, to support our customers. So um, we, we're pretty, pretty happy about that, that positioning that, that we have in, 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 in that industry. Um, and the, the challenges, I, I would say, I would say different, um, how we use the crisis. Um, what, we, what we did in, in the time of crisis is we went all in on, on digital. So what we did over the last 10 years is we made our customers digital by bringing in the CATCAM system. But we, what we did during the last weeks is um, everything that um, we looked at our business and said, okay, what can we do digitally? And first thing is all, we launched our digital convention called Digital Dental Show from HE. Um, so you can see our IDS setup digitally um, so you can walk our booth. You don't have to go to a show um, because they, most of them are canceled anyways. Um, you can go there. We launched um, a webinar series of 40 um, webinars in 10 different languages in dozens of different time zones to bring education to our customers. And we will push much, much more into digital education as well. Um, and the communication to our, to our customers will be more digital. So that's how we how we use the crisis and um, we strongly believe that, um, that you can use the crisis to, um, to, to set yourself up um, for a winning position for the future. 
Yeah, a couple of people have posted the question on, you know, what's the goal of AG and what is it known for? Or more importantly, what do you want to know to be known for? And I think you've just answered that. Yeah. Uh, in that uh, you want to be known for a complete digital workflow for exactly. laboratories. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, exactly. And it's um and with this comes that we are so what we do, we take responsibility for the for the final restoration. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to stand for. It's like if you buy a system from us a CACM system, um, you, you have a partner on your side that helps you through your transition. And in the end, we're taking care about the final restoration. It's not, it's, that's not your job um, to try to like put together all these pieces of a scanner and the software and the milling strategies and the, 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 the respective tools and the materials. That's our job. You should focus on, as a lab, you should focus on different things, not, not working, working these things out. So, what our promise is to the customer, whenever a restoration fails, you can call us or our partners and we will walk you through the system, all the steps, all the materials, and to the point, to the design, to the scan, and see where the restoration failed and help you to make it right. So that's, that's where we want to be, you know, and that's our goal. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I mean, I mean it's a great goal and, and certainly what I've seen is uh, the products are very good. As, as you know, or uh, maybe the, the viewers don't know. I've, I've owned a lot of AG mills in, in my history, and uh, uh, you know, certainly they're, they're very good mills. In fact, uh, we have another poll, which is do you use AG zirconia uh, to talk about the, the supply side? And again, I'm wondering uh, what our viewers are doing. And then uh, I'll tie in the third poll, which is what's your favorite AG product? <laughs> very good are you getting nervous at the, as people answer these things <laughs> <laughs> no I'm really interested I'm, I'm really <laughs> yeah I mean and, and it's, it's interesting because people are, are uh, fairly honest because it's anonymous and uh, so they Absolutely. can actually say what they, what they think I, I find it very fascinating awesome. uh, there you go uh, 44% use zirconia or some sort of ag pack uh i know i've been to your your facility in in austria with all the robotics and so on that's actually very impressed yeah yeah it's that's part of the that's part of the story is um and i i like the number um it, it could be higher but what, where we want to go is um it's part of the system so and you've seen in the in the production we do a lot of there is a lot of things you can, a lot of things you can change within the production process to, to adapt it to the system. And this is where we come from. We are one of, like, uh, just a few companies that have the CACM system and the material and produce it completely in-house. So yeah. we know how to produce zirconia packs that perfectly fit into our system. And um, this is this is the way we we go with all our products. It's like we wanna we wanna. We, as, as a company, we want to have control over the workflow. So you, as a customer, you, as a lab, you don't have to think about the things because you should think about different things. How, how can you use your time, your resources, your money to make things differently? Because I, I think, in, 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 especially in, in this new world, um, you have to be different as a lab compared to your peers. And um, you, should, you should focus your, your, your energy on, on, on exactly that question. Who am I and how can I be different to others? Well, uh, the last poll, what's your favorite AG product? Definitely it's mills and articulators are, are the two top ones. Very good. Yeah, which is the answer you wanted to hear. Exactly. <laughs> Ciconia should have been in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think a good 40, 40 some odd percent. I think it was forty four, forty six percent are using your your puck. So that, that's a that's a good good ratio, you know. And I've seen the robots. It's the only facility that I've seen where the robots actually move up in the ceiling, mm -hmm. and then go down when when they're dropping something off, which is you yeah, know, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
it's very efficient. We moved, um, we moved our zirconia production like three years ago out of the out of the the, the headquarter here uh, in, in in the place where I'm I'm now um, to like ten kilometers away to very highly automated um, state of the art medtech production facility um, to 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 um, account for our growth in that area. Um, as, as, you, as you saw, it's, it's, it's highly automated, it's very precise, um, and it's, we're really looking into every, each and every detail to make the, to make the material perfect, um, perfectly working in, in yeah. the lab. And, yeah. and uh, when I interrupted you, you know, you were already touching on where do you see the labs going uh, in the future, because again, You've got a great overview of what you're you're seeing is working around the world, and uh, what isn't, and uh, you know, in your opinion, if I wanted to to set up for success in the future as a laboratory, right. what would I do? Right. Um, let me start like this. If I if I would be a dental technician, I would I would definitely start a lab now. Because there is a there is a lot of chance to 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 do the things right because I think everything is changing now, and it's a it's a huge chain a huge chance to to um, to find your your place there, and the the market as I said COVID acts like an amplifier on 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 things that that's happening in the market. So whenever your setup is strong and you have the the right ideas and the right way to manage your business. Um, you can be very successful. Now everything is on the table, all the puzzle pieces, and there will be COVID will will will, um, will reshuffle these pieces, and there is a chance um, um, to to do things um, in in a very successful way. And, and how is that? Um, what what I think what what will be going on is um, there will be price pressure coming from the dentist um, on 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 the labs definitely. Um, so they will they will look into um, how to um, decrease their their um, purchasing prices. Is it with the suppliers? Is it with the labs? So there will be a price pressure, um, especially in the come to that. It's like um, especially on things that are commoditized, which means things that are the same. So if we're talking about like molar crowns done digitally, they are pretty much the same. There is no there's not much. Um, space to be different with a molar ground and that's just, that's the way so who wins in a, in a market where price is leading it's the big companies it's the efficient companies that that are very productive very efficient um, and have the bargaining power to the suppliers to get their materials cheap so that's a field uh, uh, like a normal sized lab will hardly win so then you have to think about okay what can i do different and then we're coming to complex restorations. This is where you, where you can make a difference, where you, can, um, where you as a lab can differentiate yourself by offering restorations that not every industry like milling center can offer. Um, where you as a consultant on the restorative workflow, um, have, you can speak to the dentist on, on eye level on how to do the restoration. You can, you can be, I think in a, in, in, the, in the previous session you called it the quarterback of the of the of the restoration, yeah. and this is exactly where I see the dental lab in the future. You are the the consultant, the the quarterback of the restoration, and on the digital equipment. I just can I can tell you a, a funny story. I I met a lab owner at the IDS last year, and and. He said, so um, Christian, I got to leave you. I, I got to buy an intro scanner. And I said, you're asking, why are you buying an intro scanner? You are a dental lab. And he said, no, 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 I'm, dying, I'm buying it for my dentist. I said, why are you buying it for my dentist? He says, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what to buy. So he asks me what works best for him and me as a team. So this, is, this was like one picture in my mind. It's like, okay, I think this is where it's going. This, you as a lab, you will be the, the consultant on, 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 on the digital workflow. And this is where we as a company will move to. It's like giving the, the, the instruments, the tools to, to, our, to our customers to make it, to integrate um, your, your customers, your dentists into the digital workflow. I mean, it makes sense. If I were a dentist, why wouldn't I ask my lab what, uh, 
what scanner I should get because they'll be the recipient of that Absolutely. of that work. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is what I mean. It's coming back to efficiency. And but for this, you need to free up time. And it's it's um, it's through an, an consistent workflow. It's it's through automation. It's through digitization. It's let's take your design service. Um, if if you if your design um, takes takes up a lot of time um, it, and it's not a value adding step in your lab that differentiates you that makes you different to someone, then don't spend time on it. Outsources use the time to make you different, and and spend it on 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 value adding uh, activity. Yeah, what I've been telling labs uh, through these webinars is the key differentiator or the key factor to success in the future is going to be revenue per employee. And, you know, uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, if you want to attract talent that understands digital, understands the complexities of a, of a new laboratory, you also have to pay them well. And, you know, the only way you're going to be able to do that is start increasing the revenue per employee. And then uh, you're able to provide a better living so that people who would have maybe worked in software somewhere else will come in and, and work with you. So I think that's a very important metric. And the only way you're going to do that is through scaling up with automation. And, it's like, yeah. 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 It's like uh, and in, in fact, it's, it's a very important point what you said. It's like extracting, extracting good workforce. I mean, that's around the world you see that. That's, that's, that's a huge issue to get the right and the good people into into your lab and, and the digital workflow is one I, we can see that w with all the the labs i know um that are um just in in this digital movement they are attracting young people they are that are interested because they're now working with computers at night they're playing fortnite or call of duty or something <laughs> and that day they work in a computer that's what they're looking for and this is how you and they attract very young very very excited people um, to an industry where, 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 where it's um, hard to find workforce. And I think that's, the, that's exactly the right thing that you said. Now, uh, I wanted to show a video of uh, one of your newest products. And it's, uh, I like this machine. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't own one, but, uh, you know, when I first saw it, I go, wow, this is one of the ways uh, to improve productivity through automation. So, uh, I'm going to ask the evident team just to put that up. And then I see we have a few questions. We'll get to you guys, Dan and Tim and, and everyone else who's posted the Q&A after this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll tell you why I think this is a cool product because it takes out steps in the process, right? Six. From uh, someone with a compressor blowing out the puck and uh, what I've seen in, in every lab I've walked into is there's always a table beside the milling machine with labels on it with all the half used pucks laying around and all that inventory and this machine automates that process so you actually don't need that that table with all the half used pucks that you're trying to keep track of. Exactly. You know? And again, it's less labor, right? So, 
Um, we've got a few questions here I wanted to answer. Um, you know, some of them might be tougher questions. And uh, Dan Haver is asking, you know, how have some of the new acquisitions and partnerships changed your relationships? For instance, uh, a line purchasing Exacad. How does affect how does that affect existing workflows? Uh, AG has and is there going to be a synergy with the line improving on seamless workflow with AG? Okay, that's a that's a very good question. Um, yeah, it so maybe a step back. Um, we are working with Exocad since the beginning. Um, they just uh -huh. started out of the. Um, it's a it was a spin a spin off out of a, of a yeah. university, um, and. Our R and D team is working with with Exocad since since the beginning, since the first days, um, and uh, we have a very very close relationship with them. Um, Ten years of co development, our product um, it, for us it's a, it's a it it is a very integral part of our CACM system. Um, the purchase of 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 aligned of Exocad doesn't change anything um, because Exocad stays independent um, um, in, as as a company. Um, and um, what, what we will see for the future is, um, um, is that align as, as, as part of the, of the restorative workflow um, could, be, could be part of, the, of, the, of, our, whole, um, of our whole offering um, in, in the workflow. Um, but for, for us as, as Exocad, it, as a partner, it doesn't change. Doesn't change anything. Well, uh, I, I hope that that answers the question. And Tim uh, has one that says, "How can I maximize my usage if I bought through your affiliation with Strawman?" Ah, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I get the if I get the question right of of, of maxim, maximizing the the utilization. Um, so. Um, what we have is we we have Straumann as a as a partner on on the digital workflow. So we're partnering um, with Straumann. We are um, we are delivering into into different different market segments. Um, so you can buy um, our mill um, through the as as a Stra as, uh, as as partner as an OEM mill for um, for Straumann. Um, as part of the of the Swisher workflow and and also for the for the Dental Wings workflow, um, and on the other side you have um, the the Amangirov workflow, which is um, Exocad based. So this is how we how we differentiate our our product offerings. Um, it not sure if I if I got the, uh, the 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 utilization thing thing right. Maybe we can we can ask him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you want to clarify, Tim, uh, what that, what you meant, uh, I, I was suspecting that uh, what he was wondering is whether if he bought a Strawman mill, does he need to buy all Strawman stuff to keep the workflow consistent, or can he mix and match with AG? So what I, um, we can make it differently from 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 Strauman or from us is like um, what I what I always would recommend is to stay with to to choose your partners um, and and not get too much into mix and match um, because you have your partner knows your product right how to service it how to maintain it how to support it um, so what I would recommend completely independent from from Armand Gierbach is Choose your partner, but stick with it, um, and 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 try to build up a relationship with the partner um, by staying in, in the system. Because you're building up also a bargaining power against your your supplier there uh, in terms of look, I have this and this and this for you. Um, I want you to help me through this. Um, so this is my general recommendation: is to stay to stay with the partner, choose it wisely, and stay with it. Um, because then on the other side, he can help you through all the, uh, through all the products as well. Now, I know uh, uh, AG is Exocad based. I'm curious to see uh, of, of the audience that we have, what type of CAD, CAD design software do they have? Now, Exocad, 3Shape, InLab, or something else? 
and I don't see any issues. Certainly, I've never had them when we designed from three shape and and uh, mailed it in a in an AG bill. Is that fair to say? Exactly. That's so. That's um, that's it. There was like history. Now technology and and software has become so much mature um, that this is not an issue anymore. We we talk on a regular base. Um, on, on the three shape uh, with three shape uh, uh, with uh, Schaumann and Denver wings um, to to keep this system up and running. But if you, I mean, going back to that, we our system is Exoka based, but we customize it. Um, we have twenty R and D people. Their only job is to keep the system integrated, including what we call our customized customized version of of Exoka, and. Yeah. Does, does it work with a three shape? Yes, it does, 100%. Can we support you through the whole chain in a better way if it's, if it's, it's, if it's our system? 100%. Um, is, are there workflows that are only available in our workflow because we can do it from A to C? Yes. If you, if you take the full venture workflow, that's the, 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 the only workflow is how we have it in our system. Um, in different ways, you can, we just launched um, the fully, um, printed uh, um, full denture in our system with the with the next time printer in um, which is integrated in our system now. Um, you can do hybrid milling teeth and printing the base. Um, you can fully mill and a full denture system. This is only this kind of complex restorations and complex workflows is only possible if we have as a company the full control over over every component, including the material. Um, I, I think what's happening now, at least as an observer looking at the industry, is traditionally labs have looked at milling and printing primarily for basic items, right? Whether it's a crown, you know, a bridge, you know, print a surgical guide. But now the complexity is such that you know, the number of products that you can mill or print or produce using technology is increasing. The types of products are increasing. And so it makes it tougher and tougher to continue to mix and match different things. Absolutely. Uh, because it's less efficient. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what the world is seeing. It becomes less efficient if you're mixing and matching continuously. And it, it requires more quality control checks. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious to see of, of the audience today, how many are looking for uh, to partner with the design center in the future. And you know what we're seeing is obviously that the rate limiting factor and all these things is you know building up a design team that can scale. What we're also seeing is that labs are trying to minimize their fixed expenses and turn everything into a variable expense because you know they don't know how the world is going to pan out when you when you have uncertainty absolutely what you want yeah. to do is lower your fixed expenses and try and make everything a variable cost so uh, i'm just uh, selfishly want to get an assessment yeah. and technology Sorry, is evolving in, in that way like if you take the matic yeah. like before the matic you had one mill and you have to change i mean just go one step back we just launched solid gen x solid gen x is um a high strength um, uh, solid, multi-layered. Um, we have it in 16 colors plus two in five different heights. So this is, and it, whenever you, you had a, a change in height or color, you had to run to your mill and change the puck. Now yeah. you have a 36, 33 disc changer in your mill. So your mill is not the, the limiting factor anymore, it's design. Now it's becoming design. The, 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 the mill side is automized. Either you have a couple of mills or you have automation auto, uh, solutions like our map. But now the design is, is becoming your limiting factor. Absolutely. In fact, that's what we're seeing. And in, in, I don't know if you know this in the poll, uh, almost 70 plus percent of labs said they're already either partnered with or looking to partner with the design center like Evident. Right? There you go. It's seventy-seven wow. percent, right? And I, I can see that. Here's a perfect example of what we're experiencing now. 
I mean, for one, we're we're really grateful to the the people that have supported us as uh, at Evident because we're busy and uh, we've become busy because of a couple of things. Oddly enough, you know, your basic crown and bridge hasn't scaled up as much as some of the other products, whether it's digital dentures, aligners. I mean, you know, we turned on the the uh, switch to start designing aligners for different labs so they can offer it to to their clients. And I mean, within a short amount of time, we were designing 500 patients a day. And we're like, wow, you know, it's because it gives a lab a chance to sell all these other things that they, exactly. they don't. That's what I was referring to. It's like, if you really look at your portfolio, um, where are they? What can you add to your portfolio that makes it different um, to, your, to, your, to your competitors and makes, makes your relationship to your dent, find new dentists or makes your relationship with your dentist more valuable? And this is exactly what you, where you want to go. You want to go into aligners, you want to go into complex restorations, implant yeah. restorations, um, uh, and, and go away from, from the normal molar ground that can be, it's only doing a molar ground faster and cheaper will not help you to survive. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a very fair point. In fact, what we're seeing with the labs that do a lot of complex, uh, small design cases, for example, right. you know, they're now reaching into the aligner therapy because uh, especially in the UK, you know, minimally invasive. So uh, everyone prepares to do some sort of orthodontic treatment before they go into uh, any smile design, uh, whether it's veneers or, or uh, composites. And mm -hmm. so previously, the lab had no relationship with that uh, uh, orthodontic tr treatment prior to right. them getting involved, but now it's become, it's become a, a holistic architecture in that. And right. I, I find that very interesting. Yeah. Um, yes. mm -hmm. uh, here's uh, Mike Cash, and Mike uh, uh, is well experienced in, in the world of dentistry. And he's asking, what form of marketing do you prefer to use or will you use to reach more labs in the US and Europe? No, that's, a, that's also a very good question. Um, so we used to be, it's, it's a perfect example um, how COVID changed us. Um, we used to be still very, very analog, let's say, um, being in, in, on, on dental exhibitions, um, having ads and magazines, um, and that will definitely change for the future. Well, it changed now. Um, we're almost 100% digital in marketing. Will it come back to, to, to some analog marketing? Um, for sure. But it's, I think it's the same like in, in, in your shopping um, experience. You will, it, you will never go back to the, to, the, to the share of digital as you had before COVID. Um, there is, that's COVID just amplified and, and accelerated that development in digital marketing. And that's, that's the same way we will do. Um, so we will go much more digital using digital. To, I mean, look at, look at us. We are in a webinar now. Um, that's, <laughs> that's, that's new. All the communication that, that went digital. Um, the things you can do, use digital tools now, is just incredible. Um, so our way, definitely, there's no difference in, in Europe or, um, or, or US, um, will, be, will be much more digital. Um, and you can, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, our digital dental show, you can see 15 of, of our um, most important products completely virtual now. And, and go through our booth and, and, and get, get your information that you need. You don't have to leave your, your couch anymore and fly to Chicago, you're, you're digitally there. Um, and there will be, there is always a need for things to touch and uh, things to see, but the share of it will be much less than before. And uh, Robert's asking, what are AG connections to bots or IO scanners? So, um, are you guys yeah. building your own intraoral scanner? <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. Um, oh. So, what we what we have is um, we. Um, so first, we you can use every STL. So we have an open system, um, and that's that's also a very important important message to say. 
Um, an AG system is always an open system. So you can use every material you want, um, uh, verse you want, you can use um, uh, different scanners, but it always works the best if you stay within the system. So say, having said that, um, we, can, we can use every STL out of every scanner. Um, so that's, so in terms of connection, there is no connection needed. As long as we get an STL, you can, you can, you can import it in, into our design software and then use it. Um, so, and for the, um, for the intra oil scanners, we have, um, already a strong co uh, collaboration since I think 2014, 13 with three shape, um, where we have connected the inbox from three shape, uh, into our system. Uh, we have Itero integrated, we have um, Teststream integrated, 3M. Um, so all these companies where we, but this integration goes a bit further. This is, when we talk about an integrated system, it's really, really look into what's coming from the scanner side in terms of parameters, material parameters, indications, and how can we make it as seamless as possible to, to go into our system. Because if you just get an SL, you have to start over the case again. Type in the doctor, type in the patient, yeah. type in the restoration, the color, da 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 da. da. Um, and for, the, for those kind um, of, of corporations where we really go into a deep cooperation with our partners, um, we integrate them and, and even do a validation of the integration. So, what, as I said, as we take responsibility of the, of the final restoration, um, we have the IOS in our RD department. We do a multitude of, of different indications from, from a ground to, to bridges to implant borne restoration, test them, mill them, and, 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 and validate the full system from A to C. Got it. Thanks for that explanation, Christian. Now, here's an interesting one. How do you improve service and support? <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's a, yeah. That's a, it's it's a becomes a tricky question. subject, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it is. And it's, um, uh, it's we, we're dealing with complex products. That's that's for sure. So um, it's it's having a mill, and if we talk about the medic, especially, it's it's not a it's not an easy it's not a toaster. What we what we're offering. Um, so service and support is super important for us, and nothing comes out of the box and works forever. So there has to be maintenance. There has to be service. And um, to be honest, we around the globe, we're not consistently happy with what we're doing um, in terms of service and it's a big big part of our initiative um, uh, um, on, on moving the company forward so we just announced um, a, a whole new department that globally takes care about service and and it it derives from a from a from 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 learnings we had over the last couple of months and years is in germany where we are direct we're selling direct in Germany. So if you buy in Germany, you're buying from AG and you get the service from AG from the manufacturer. Um, everybody loves us for our service and we're known for our service and it's part of our promise. And this newly, this new department will, will try to, to replicate what we learned in Germany, in other countries, in other regions with our, with our partners. Because it's, it's on us to educate our partners well enough that they can do um, a manufacturer like like service in, in in the world as we want to have, because again it's part of our brand promise. It's it's part of what we are. Because if you buy an AG system, you don't have to worry, and that's our it's our job to 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 make that happen. Yeah, all around the world, what that what I've seen is companies that are doing direct because of the complexity of their products are able to service it better when they do it that way. Then when they go through distribution, it's one of the challenges uh, that I find companies will have with with the technology coming down the pipe, right? Because it's just so. I mean, it's not simple as a mill anymore. There's software. There's hardware. Exactly. There's exactly. You know, and so. it's and it's it's moving. Um, it's moving in a, at a very high pace. Um, if I see, yeah. if I look back on 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 the kind of restorations we added to the system. Um, and we have a cadence of at least three to four nature updates a year where we bring new things to the system, keeping everybody, I mean, it's already a challenge to keep our people up to speed. And um, we, we, we do this in, in, in various training sessions and different cadences of, of trainings. 
and our distribution partners. So that's the biggest job we are working on is to bring to bring everybody in our network to the to the same level um, that we expect to to uh, to, to take care and, and support for our products. Yeah. And then you get guys like us that have to design it, and we still have to calibrate with your equipment because, you know, I mean, the reality is every mill or every printer has some nuance. And when you're designing cases for that, as the complexity increases, you know, calibrating with the design center is very important. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But the, the good thing is um, what, we, what we offer is more or less a standardized um, system and, and with a lot of standards. So we know that a CACAM system in Italy from us functions the uh -huh. same way as in the US, as in Germany. As you, if you do mix and match, everybody can, you, you're not able to support that on a, on a global scale. Or it's, very it's hard tough. because it, you have so many different parameters, so many variables um, you, can, you, can, you can choose and, and, and change, but it's hard to support that. That's, that makes it a bit easier for us to keep, to keep, um, to keep the system as it is and, yeah. and support it on a, on, a, on a high level and on a global scale. Yeah. Not only that, I, I think laboratories underestimate the, the cost of having to keep up to date with the software. Exactly. What we're seeing is a lot, a lot of laboratories actually don't update their software. And so you have different versions of the software yeah. with different products all trying to talk to each other. I can, I can just add the risk yourself. Paolo, I can, yeah, I can just add to that. It's, a, it's, it's hundred percent our release. So we have a release plan. So whenever a new software update from us comes, um, we have four to six months. Um, of testing internally and with with beta customers and 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 and, and, and a limited um, a market release before we put it out globally, because there are so many as you said so it's, it's so complex with all the interfaces from scanning to designing to the cam um, to the all the different software parts um, that we want to ensure that it works at the customer at the, the the time they download it. And to be honest, there was a time where, where customers said I don't. Do the update from you because I'm not sure what's happening. Um, <laughs> but this is this is under control now, and this is this took a lot of work to to get a stable process there that makes our system as it as it works. Now here's an interesting question: uh, How do you see the Asian markets going digital with Aman Gerbach and competitors? Yeah, that's 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 really interesting. Um, what we see is. Um, so what, what we encounter in, in Asia is, um, first, digital is definitely a movement. Um, so the, the, there are markets um, like Taiwan, um, Japan, Korea. Korea is crazy in terms of digitalization. Um, it's, it's, I would say it's the mo in terms of CACAM, it's the most advanced market in, in the world. Yeah. Um, but you can also see it, and that's, that's, that's for us the challenge in, in terms of competition. Um, so competition out of Asia in terms of CACAM systems is if, if it's scanners, um, um, uh, intra OS scanners, um, it's it's definitely there. For mills, um, in terms of competition, it's a bit more complex. It's not that easy to build a mill. Um, it's easier to build. It's, it, it sounds funny, but it's easier to build a three D printer um, than a, than a good working and, and durable and long lasting mill. As, Oh. So in short, uh, the competition's not so bad yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I wanted to make sure we didn't forget this. For anyone who needs a CE certificate uh, from Evident who's listening in, uh, send us your your. Just click the poll and and we'll send you a an actual CE certificate so you can get some, some CE credits for this. Uh, so let's fast forward, you know, five years from now. Where do you think AG will be five years from now? Mm. I 100% I I truly believe um, that we are in a very good position in, in terms of what's, what's coming up. Um, but because we're, we have, um, we're offering an ecosystem um, with many strong and very um, close partners, really, really close partners, um, partners like friends, 
if I talk about um, Vita, for example, um, which is a very close partner to us, we just um, partnered with Ivoclar on on um, on the on the uh, as authorized partner for Emacs. Um, so what we what we're doing is offering an ecosystem that is easy to operate that that grows with the needs of of, of our customers, and in future will will will, co will be comprehensive over the the whole digital restorative world. And I think this is where the industry is going. The industry is going digital because digital is better. That's one of our core beliefs. Digital is better in every aspect. Um, and it's better for the patient, it's better for the dentist, and it's better for the lab. And um, this is how we see us positioned is in the end, we will offer an, an, a digital ecosystem an infrastructure um, that is easy to learn um, and easy to maintain and easy to grow with. And that's, that's the most important part for us is how can we help our labs? All the things I said about complex restorations, how can we bring that to our customers um, and on an easy way, easy to learn, and up, so it's easy to upgrade themselves and offer it to the, to the, to the customers. So this is where I see us in five years. Well, I, I like hearing that because no matter what, the more technology you put in, it doesn't work unless you have a design center like us designing <laughs> the cases <laughs> and <laughs> the complexity in, in the designs is increasing. Um, so I, I actually support the digitization of the industry I mean, selfishly because we're in that business, but also because we go back to the fundamental issue in the lab business today. You need higher revenue per employee yeah. so that you can pay people more so that you can have, you know, the talent you need that can grow with the industry as it evolves. And I, I think the survival of the industry is dependent on that because Absolutely. the complexity is increasing. Absolutely. And so, you know, anywhere we can help to do that, we're happy to. So, and I, uh, I see, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, sorry. I just said, I don't want to see the restorative workflow and the restorative work going to many centers. I just, I, I just don't want to see that. I believe that a restorative, a restoration should be done in a team of, of a dental lab technician and a dentist. It's a team. And digital technology helps there um, to keep, what we try to do is keep the labs relevant in their lifetime. And that's where, where I think it's, that's, that's, that's important for us. And that's, that's where I would, that's my, my core belief that it's always better than just if it's a, maybe it's too harsh, but a faceless milling center that, that does thousands of grounds and there's no like like relationship and communication um, um, over the restoration this is this is where we we as a company uh, want to provide a solution with, with, with our work yeah and, and I, I think COVID's helping you a lot because the whole logistics supply chain has Absolutely. been disrupted you know and so now you're not just worried about the milling center you're worried about FedEx or UPS or DHL, whether they can ship. You're worried about governments changing their mind, whether, you know, one day you're allowed, not next day you're not. And so it, it actually makes sense for labs to start insourcing uh, awesome. a bit more capacity, right? Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, before they couldn't do that because, again, they lacked the, the design support. But now guys like us at Evident can do that for them. So Absolutely. there's no rate limiting factor to, to keeping the mills Absolutely. running. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And this is what we stand for. Then, as I said, since the beginning, it's like we want to move the work into, into, our, into the labs of our customers. That's the in-house movement. <laughs> well, and on that note, Christian, thank you very much. It's uh, always a pleasure. We're at the, the top of the hour. Time just moves because Okay. I feel like we're just chatting away, like we're having a beer in Chicago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the beer is missing. <laughs> yeah, the beer is missing. <laughs> so, but hey, uh, thanks for taking time out of your schedule. And, uh, uh, I hope I can see you soon, my friend. My, it's my pleasure. Thanks, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, on that note, guys, uh, Stay safe, and uh, I hope you have a great week coming up. And, uh, you know, we look forward to chatting with you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.